This is a Volkswagen T-Roc, and if you're in the market for one of these, make sure you watch this video. Do not skip, because I'm gonna show you all the common problems, all the things that tend to go wrong, so you can go out there and find the best example possible. Let's go. I've not put that in the right place. Cut. <laughs> so let's start on the engine front. Petrol power first. We had three or, well, four options actually, if you count the super powered t rock R. Let's start with the normal ones first because that's probably what you're looking to buy. We had the choice of a one liter, a 1.5, or a two liter in petrol form. Now, right off the bat, I would say just disregard that one liter. Not because of problems, just because it doesn't really have the guts to power a car of this size. This is almost two tons, and one liter is just a bit too labored. Now the 1.5 on the other hand, power wise is fine, but be aware that this is the engine that tends to have the problems with kangarooing that some owners report. In other words, it's quite hard to drive it smoothly off the line. Thankfully, later software updates do seem to have solved this to some extent, but it's always worth being aware of just in case it's not had those software updates. Finally, the two liter, good engine once again. If you're looking to sacrifice a little bit of the efficiency of that 1.5 for the power of the two liter, that may well be the one that you're looking for. Now the final engine reserved for the t rock R is basically lifted right out of the Golf R. So it's a two liter, 300 brake horsepower engine. And if you're looking to sacrifice all the efficiency for heaps more power, then that's the one you're after. Still, in this form of car, it's probably still an easier sell to the wife than a Golf R would be. So on the diesel front, you could get this. 116 brake horsepower, 1.6. Granted, not an awful lot more power than the one liter that I just told you to disregard. Here's the difference though, the added torque of the diesel does make a difference to the way the car feels on the road. Now, if you need something gutsier than the 1.6, you could also get it in a two liter. Thankfully, both of these engines really, really reliable as they should be on a car this new, to be honest. So we don't normally do this, but we're gonna jump in and start talking about the gearbox right away because there's some quite important things to convey to you here. So you had two options. First up was the manual. Now again, especially in a car this new, it's pretty hard to go wrong with that. That plane is gonna mess this shot up. <laughs> We will talk about this a bit more on that test drive later in the video, so stick around for that. Now, the other option you could get was the DSG, the dual clutch automatic style gearbox. Here's where it gets a little bit complicated, but this is what you need to know. Volkswagen, when they made these cars, dependent on the engine and drivetrain combination, put either a dry or a wet clutch in them. Why is that important? Well, the wet clutch you see is super reliable. It's used in tons of platforms and usually they tend to last the whole life of the car. The dry clutch, on the other hand, doesn't. That tends to have problems as early as 20, 25,000 miles. It can start wearing out the clutches. Now, what you're looking for on that test drive is making sure that the car doesn't judder. So you're coming up to a set of traffic lights, a roundabout, a junction, something like that. Don't fully stop, keep the car crawling, and then hit the accelerator pedal. Not necessarily hard, just take away briskly and make sure there's no judder. Here's the best thing you can do though. When you go and look at one of these, or if you've already bought one and you're unsure as to whether it's got that dry or wet clutch pack, drop a comment below, let us know the engine size and whether it's two wheel drive or four wheel drive, and we'll come back and let you know what your car has. Another damn plane. <laughs> Film it. Film them. <laughs> Quick note, something I forgot on the engine front, and that is, again, just dependent on the engine size that you go for. Some of these engines use timing chains. Some of them use timing belts. Now, obviously, to stand here and go through each and every one would take a bit of time and probably gonna bore you to death and you'll click off of this video and go watch someone else's, so we don't want that. So best thing to do, drop a comment below with your engine size and I can let you know whether or not you've got a timing chain or belt. The intervals tend to be five years and 80,000 miles for the belts and obviously it costs money, it's labor intensive. For the chains, again, usually life of the car. 
So next up, let's talk about the other problems that you need to be aware of. But before we get to it, a quick favor to ask of you guys, and that is we create these buyer's guides for literally every type of car. So this might be a worthwhile subscribe for you. Please do subscribe. And also, if you're getting value from the video, please do hit that like button so that others can find it as well. Anyway, next problem. If you're lucky enough to be buying one of these that has the reverse camera, this one doesn't, it's usually there. Make sure it actually works. Here's the problem. A lot of people would get this issue. They would contact Volkswagen who will fix it under warranty, but oftentimes a non-critical repair like that could take three or six months to repair. So a lot of people just left it. Then you come along and buy it, not knowing that it's got a problem. So double check. While we're at the back end here, give this spoiler a good push and pull, make sure it's not loose. Similar story to the reverse camera, a lot of owners would realise that these were starting to come a bit loose, but just leave it because the repair took too long. So make sure it's well attached. And also an unusual one for such a new car, but water ingress into the boot area could be a problem, particularly on the earlier models. I just get dripped on there. So easy way to spot it, the actual boot lid itself, move it up and down a couple times and listen for any water sloshing about inside this. Also, it never hurts to get in here and make sure there's no sign of water ingress as well. Continuing on that theme of water ingress, here's another area to check. Now, a lot of people get this wrong because they think this is just a push-pull mechanism with no actuator, but there actually is a little actuator in here and water can get into it. And when it does, it prevents it from unlocking. The actuator is there to lock when the doors lock. And what you'll find is you'll push it and just nothing will happen. It either won't open or won't close. So make sure you discover that before you end up in the petrol station for court trying to put fuel in. Here's another one, a little bit unusual, but groaning rear brake pads were really common as well. You might hear this on your test drive as you pull out and get going, usually when the brakes are cold. Now, this wasn't a problem as such, more of an annoyance than anything else. Worth being aware, Volkswagen would replace them for you if you went to them and complained about it. Now, because it wasn't critical, it wasn't a critical issue, they never issued a mandatory update to go in and get it done. But if you ask them, they will do it for you. This long, I've not had any problems. I like this, I don't like this so much. So obviously when you were buying one of these T-Rocks, there was a few different specifications to choose from. I'll put the highlights on screen right now and really, I can't recommend one as such. It really comes down to you and your budget. It's so subjective. So take your pick and go for whatever your budget allows. Here's something that is not subjective, however. Again, water ingress issues, wherein water could get into the headlining and it would usually tend to come through this rear view mirror. So obviously, check for any water itself, but also check for any staining around the mirror to suggest that the car has previously had that problem. So here we are on that test drive. What are we looking for then? Well, problem number one is to do with the DSG gearbox working in unison with this automatic handbrake that we've got. So the way that it should work, you go into drive, you pull away, the handbrake releases, everything works in unison, lovely. But that's often not the case. There's a problem with the touch points on those DSG clutches, wherein the handbrake doesn't realize it's came to the biting point, so it doesn't release. What's required there is a clutch learn from Volkswagen themselves. So make sure on that test drive, it's as smooth as this to just pull away. Final thing to warn you of when you go and view one of these cars, but don't click off of this video after I've told you this, wait and see how it scores on a reliability leaderboard. But here's the final thing for now, and it is the top mounts of the front suspension. What you want to do is listen out for any knocking coming from them. Here's the problem, a lot of people again had these cars under warranty, they took it to VW when the top mounts started to wear and started to knock, and they would tell them we're not replacing it until it's bad enough. So as it starts to go, it makes a little bit of knocking, it continues to get worse, and only then would Volkswagen replace it. So listen out, make sure it's not the case on the one you're buying. Now let's see how it scores on a reliability leaderboard. 
So the T-Rock then, how do we score it on a reliability leaderboard? Well, you'll notice pretty much every problem that I've mentioned here is fairly trivial. So on that basis, we score it a pretty massive 8.5 out of 10. Now, thank you so much for watching. Please do hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.